how y'all doing I'm the watchman and this is part 11 part 11 of the mark of the beast but it's subtitled the tale of two marks because it hit me you know it was nothing but the Lord you know that the other day and it hit me like a ton of bricks that God has a mark also that a lot of Christians don't know about and the devil would like to keep it hid because as we know the devil mirror matches God on everything you know he tries to copy God on everything he's an angel he's a created being so he can't create so he copies you know he mirror matches and even down to the mark and and if God's mark if God's mark as we seen in part 10 is a a written mark a written mark in the head you know in the forehead then why would the devil's mark be a computer chip in the hand or in the forehead you know he copies God in everything he does everything he does you know and in this one I mean really getting to death about what exactly the mark is but before I do I wanna you know I definitely wanna point out that you know as Ezekiel 8 Ezekiel chapter 8 as we seen you know where God is he took Ezekiel and he's He's showing them, he's showing Ezekiel the temple in Jerusalem and how in Jerusalem they were they were wor worshiping the sun god Nimrod and his son Tammuz. You know, and they go they mirror match and go hand in hand, Tammuz and Nimrod, you know. Like I said, I believe it's in part nine, Nimrod and Tammuz is the copycat version of Christ and God. You know, Tammuz's birthday is December 25th. The cross was the T. You know, the reason why the Romans had the T, they hung and crucified people on their God. They worshipped. The Romans were pagan worshippers. They weren't Christians then. You know, they worshipped Tammuz. And so what God did was he took Ezekiel to this point in time to show him what was going on in his temple. He took him then and it reflects as all prophecy does usually prophecy comes for that day and time and it reflects uh, these last days these last days but anyway as verse 16 said you know they were standing in the temple of the Lord with their faces toward the east and they worshiped the sun toward the east that was Ezekiel 8 verse 16 that was it the end of verse 16 but I want to show you know even then People will say, well, you know, because God's mark is in Ezekiel 9. The whole chapter is about God's mark. And and whoever doesn't have God's mark, God's seal, is killed, you know, is, is immediately killed. And I'm going to show the fulfillment where God talks about this chapter 9 being fulfilled in Revelation. In Revelation I'm gonna get into that but I want to point out at the beginning of verse 9 this is how angry it makes God about what goes on in his temple especially when it comes to Sun worship or should I say worshiping on the day of the Sun he says at the beginning of chapter 9 verse 1 he says he cried also in my ears this is Ezekiel telling us about God he says he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice now, I don't know about y'all but when I when I if I if I'm crying and I'm screaming at the same time, if I'm crying and I got a loud voice, that means I am in very, 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 very upset and heated. For real. So imagine God. God is pure love. So imagine pure love crying. And then with a loud voice, he says, you know, cause them that have charge over the city to draw near every man with his destroying weapon in his hand mm. that means there's something serious about to happen but anyway I want to point out because some people say well chapter 9 even though he's he's showing how sun worship is a great great abomination chapter 8 chapter 9 isn't really talking about that I want to show two distinct similarities that God says in both chapters Ezekiel chapter 8 Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 17 right after he points out the people worshiping the sun 
in his temple, God says, verse 17, Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Verse 18, Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. How many times do we hear God say, if you cry to me, I won't hear you. It's rare. God is very heated. Now, we, we just read, he says that in chapter 8, right? Well, check what he says in chapter 9. See if you see any similarities. Chapter 9, verse 9. Then he said unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great and the land is full of blood and the city full of perverseness for they say the Lord hath forsaken the earth and the Lord seeth not and as for me also mine eye shall not spare neither will I have pity but I will recompense their way upon their head sounds almost like the exact verses the exact verses and so I know without a shadow of a doubt beloved that there is no coincidence that that God put these two chapters back to back. God put these two chapters. There is no coincidence. Now, God's mark is a written mark. When you think of God and you think about written or something written, what else is written when you think about God? God's written word. God's written word. Now, could it be? Could it be that God's written word will be the seal of the saints. Could it be? Because God had this man go through the city and he said anybody who was hurting and sad and did not like to see basically anybody who wasn't happy what was going on in God's house got his seal. And it was a written seal. So could it be that God's written word will be the seal of the saints it will be the mark of the saints God's written word let's see let's go to Revelation I think God answers this let's go to Revelation 14 14 for I believe that God's this this just to read let's just read Revelation 14 Revelation 14 12 says here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Hmm. God says, when he says who are his saints, those who receive his mark, it says, Revelation 14, 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. And let's one more, one more. Revelation, go to Revelation 22. Revelation 22, and let's read 14. Revelation 22, verse 14, and God says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now, God just distinctly, he distinctly, in Revelation 14, he says, These are my saints. And he told the characteristics of the saints. Then he says in Revelation 22, 14, he tells of those who enter into heaven. What was the same characteristic that these two, that these people had? It was the commandments. The commandments. Both times he distinctly said, the people who are my saints, the people who are chosen, the people who will make it into, to eat off the tree of life, into the new Jerusalem, are those who keep my commandments and have the faith of Jesus. Well, if that's not enough for some, you know, if that's not enough, then let's see who the devil's really at war with. Let's see who the devil's really at war with. If that's, if that's not enough for you to say, well, you know what? Maybe, you know, maybe those who keep God's commandments will be the only ones who be saved. Well, let's see who the devil's at war with. Now, remember, y'all, this is what you definitely have to remember. What God say, you either with me or against me. You know, the same goes for the devil. You either with him or you're against him. So 
who the devil's enemies is should be something big, right? It should really say who the saints are. Because if you're an enemy of the devil, that means you're a saint of God. That means you're a child of God. So let's see who the devil's enemy is. Turn to Revelation, Revelation 12, and we're going to read verse 17. Revelation 12, verse 17. It says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war. Went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Well, who was her remnant? Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, right there. It says the devil is at war with the remnant of the woman's seed, the church. And who is the remnant of her seed? Verse 17 says, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now that's three different times we see in Revelation, talking about the last days, where God says twice it was God was saying, my chosen people are those who keep my commandments. You know, again, for y'all who missed it, that's Revelation 12, 14, 12, and Revelation 22, 14. And then we see that the devil is at war with those who keep the commandments. Now, remember, you either with God or you're against him. And the same goes for the devil. You either with him or against him. So if those who are against the devil keep the commandments, then I'm here to tell you, beloved, that it is no coincidence. This isn't just me talking. It isn't. It is the commandments is the seal of God. So it makes perfect sense why the devil would have so many saying the same thing that he said. Remember when the devil was in heaven, he didn't come to the angels and say, come on, follow me. I'm about to be evil and destroy and ruin everything. He said, you don't have to follow God's law. To be a good angel, you can be you can be your own God. His beef was with Jesus and the law. Why was it with Jesus? Because Jesus created the law. Jesus stood in the devil's way from dethroning God. The devil wanted to get to God's throne, but he had to get through our king first. He had to get through Jesus first. That's why he hates Jesus. And and Jesus created the law. Oh, yeah. Think about it. Go with me in your Bibles to John. Let's go to John. Read John chapter 1. And I want to tell y'all, Jesus created the devil too. That's why when you sin and you knowingly sin, knowing you're doing wrong, you're hating your creator. You're turning your back on your creator. For Jesus created the devil too. John 1. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things. Say it with me. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Wasn't the devil a created being? Yeah, he was a created being. So guess who made him? My Bible tells me Jesus made him. Guess who made the law? Jesus made the law. What did he tell them? What did he tell them? I wasn't going to add this in, but the Spirit's moving. What did he tell them? In Matthew, he said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Turn to Exodus 20. Exodus 20. To the Sabbath commandment. Exodus 20, verse 8. It speaks. He says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. The, the Sabbath commandment is the only commandment that states how a form of worship, on how you should worship, you know, on how you should worship God. You know, it gives more details on how you are to worship God. That's why Jesus said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Meaning, when you keep the Sabbath, it is Jesus you are worshiping. So, it is no coincidence that, beloved, that God says it is his commandments that will seal you in the last days. It is his commandments that you receive God's mark. 